Welcome to the video on the Coaxpress camera interface. Very early machine vision systems used analog cameras connected to a frame grabber with a coaxial cable or coax cable. Coax cables have the advantage that they can be more easily terminated with a connector in the field than the cables used for camera link or USB 3 vision. A coaxial cable consists of a center conductor, an insulator surrounds the center conductor, there is a shield over the insulator, and finally a plastic jacket is put on over the shield. Coax cables have long been used for carrying radio frequency signals such as television over long distances. Coaxpress uses one or more coax cables. We'll talk more about that later. The cable, or cables, run directly from the camera to the frame grabber in the computer. Because the camera connects only directly to the frame grabber in the computer, Coaxpress is a point-to-point -point interface. Because development of the Coaxpress standard happened after the Genicam standard, Genicam is required by Coaxpress. Historically, the most common connector used with coax cable was the BNC connector. It had a bayonet lock that ensured reliable retention when connected. The coax press standard adopts the use of the BNC connector. The coax press standard also supports use of the DIN connector. When choosing the camera, frame grabber, and cable, making sure there is connector compatibility is essential. We talked briefly before about coax cable and how it is used to transmit radio frequency signals. The coax cable has a characteristic that it attenuates some frequencies more than others and that the actual speed at which frequency travel along the cable varies. For a radio frequency signal, which is a single frequency or very narrow band of frequencies, this variation is unnoticeable until the frequency gets so high that attenuation makes the signal too weak. Digital signals, consisting of pulses, contain multiple frequencies over a wide range. The differing attenuations and velocity of propagation cause a transmitted pulse to become distorted. The longer the cable, or the shorter the pulse, the greater the distortion. So sending digital signals longer distances over coax cable has problems. The distortion can be corrected if we know its characteristic. However, the distortion varies with the specific cable used, its length, and other factors. So it is not possible to know in advance how to compensate for some unknown cable's distortion. There is a technique called equalization which can correct for the cable's distortion. If, at startup, the transmitter sends a known signal, the circuit, called an equalizer, analyzes the received signal and compensates for the cable's distortion of the signal. The result is that the equalizer can provide a clean, undistorted signal out. The use of an equalizer that learns the cable's distortion and corrects for it allows very high-speed digital signals to be sent long distances over coax cable. Now that you understand that Coaxpress uses some interesting technology to gain speed and cable length, we need to talk about these two parameters. The specification lists achieving, over one coax cable, 6.25 gigabits per second for cable lengths up to 100 meters. The practical limits seem to be a little different. To achieve 6.25 gigabits per second, practical cable lengths are limited to around 20 to maybe 68 meters, depending on the quality of the cable. If a data speed is limited to 5 gigabits per second, the maximum cable lengths range from 30 to 102 meters. For a data rate of 2.5 gigabits per second, cables can reach from 43 to 185 meters. The takeaway is that the maximum cable length depends upon the maximum data rate and the quality of the cable. Over the same cable, that can upload data from the camera to the frame grabber at up to 6.25 gigabits per second, a reverse signal for downloading data from the frame grabber to the camera 
at a little over 20 megabits per second is available. In addition, the Coaxpress standard provides for up to 13 watts of power delivered to the camera over the same coax cable. Let's summarize what one coax cable between the camera and the frame grabber can provide. Up to 6.25 gigabits per second camera to frame grabber. More than 20 megabits per second frame grabber to camera. And 13 watts of power to the camera. But wait, there's more. Coaxpress provides for multiple coax cables as needed. Add additional coax cables and the data rate increases. Power delivered to the camera can also increase. While the number of cables is not limited in the specification, typical configurations are one, two, and four cables. So camera data rates can reach 25 gigabits per second with four cables. While we are on the subject of data transmission rates, we need to look at how Coaxpress transmits data. Continuous streaming of digital data would give the highest bandwidth. It comes, though, at a sacrifice in reliability. If the transmitter and receiver ever get out of synchronization, the data will remain corrupted until the system is restarted. For this reason, and to provide more flexibility, data transmission is typically performed in packets. A packet usually consists of a header that tells the receiver what kind of data is contained in the packet, the data itself, and finally a trailer that usually confirms the end of the packet and often has redundant data to help ensure data reliability. The use of packets along with their headers and trailers reduces the effective data rate, but gives high reliability for receipt of valid image data. Coaxpress defines three packets that the camera can send to the frame grabber. Streaming data, typically image data, trigger, and control and test data. For the moment, we'll focus on image data transmission. The number of bytes in an image data packet can vary with the implementation but 4096 is the most typical value. The header consists of 24 bytes of data that indicate the start of packet, identify the packet as streaming data, and give the number of words in the packet. For Coaxpress, a word is four bytes. The trailer consists of five words or 20 bytes. The first word is a cyclical redundancy check or CRC that allows for the detection of errors and the correction of single bit errors in the packet. So the entire data packet takes 4,140 bytes. For increased data reliability, each, each 8 bit byte is represented with 10 bits in the data stream. So the packet is 41,400 bits long. What does this mean? To transmit 4,096 bytes, or 32,768 bits, takes 41,400 bits in Coaxpress. The 6.25 gigabits per second data rate gives a useful maximum transfer rate of 618 megabytes per second. We saw that each data packet has some redundancy in each byte for reliability and a checksum at the end that facilitates detecting data errors and allows correction of single bit errors. One aspect of data transmission that was deliberately omitted from the Coaxpress standard was handshaking for the data packet transmissions. This means if a data packet is badly corrupted, there is no provision to resend it. Fortunately, in point-to-point -point connections, the probability of data corruption is extremely low. So while Coaxpress doesn't guarantee delivery of valid data, its reliability is still extremely high. By eliminating handshaking for the data stream transmission, latency and the uncertainty in latency is reduced significantly. Since we've touched on latency, we can continue with another signal packet, the trigger signal. 
the trigger signal packet can be sent either from the frame grabber to the camera over the low speed channel or from the camera to the frame grabber over the high speed channel. Trigger packets have the highest priority. They can be inserted between data packets when necessary. The trigger packet is designed with information that allows latency correction. The trigger from the frame grabber to the camera over the low speed channel has a fixed latency of 3.4 microseconds with an uncertainty, that is jitter, of plus or minus 2 nanoseconds. Here are the important takeaways for you as a potential user of Coexpress. It is a point-to-point -point interface that requires a frame grabber. It is very high speed. Speed can be increased using multiple coax cables. It facilitates long cables between the camera and the frame grabber. It is reliable and offers very precise triggering. Now you know about Coexpress. You should go to the next video and learn about the CameraLink HS interface standard.